Okay, this is gonna be a big pile to pick up. I hope that doesn't fall. Where's my phone? Here we go. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this month's wrap up. Last month's wrap up, but posted this month. Why is that confusing to say? All of the books I read in June, my opinions, my ratings, how I feel, if I recommend them, all the good stuff, you guys know how this goes. I actually read 17 books in the month of June. I think I blacked out because I honestly don't remember reading some of these. Not that I don't remember reading them, but I don't remember reading so many. Like it didn't feel like I was reading so many, which I guess is a good thing. This is gonna be an interesting one because my ratings range from between two stars and five stars. Like there's a lot going on with these books. Like there's mystery, fantasy, romance, lots of different ratings, lots of different reviews that are gonna to be coming at you guys so let's just get right into it first book i read this month which feels like so 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 long ago i actually buddy read this with destiny and Haley while we were in lbi over that few days that we were together this is once more with feeling by Alyssa sussman this one i actually low-key forgot what it was about but it's basically a second chance romance about this up-and-coming pop star who has a boyfriend and he's part of a boy band but then she starts spending more time with another member of the same boy band and then you get that timeline and then you get present day timeline where she's older and she was such a huge pop star back in the day but now you get present timeline she's no longer a star like that because something happened and she's now auditioning to be part of a broadway something on broadway and the person that's directing it or whatever is the one of the boy band members from back in the day i actually gave this two stars which is a bummer to start the month off with i just personally didn't feel the connection between the two characters that was one part that i didn't love i didn't feel anything for the two characters and i think that also is because in the past timeline what happened between the two characters i didn't love i don't love when that happens in books and it just wasn't for me i think i do enjoy her writing because her writing i felt the same way with her previous book that i read by her is just so easy to get through like it was very much a quick read it was a bingeable book is that even a word i don't know but it was very easy to get through which i enjoyed i just think that i didn't connect with the story and i didn't enjoy the story too much so that's why i gave it two stars i will say the cover is beautiful but it wasn't for me personally then i read reckless by elsie silver this one I read on my Kindle as Kindle Unlimited, but I actually have it. She was so kind to let me read it as an ARC, an early release copy of the book, and then obviously as soon as it came out, I immediately bought it. This cover is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That mini cowboy boot is absolutely everything to me, but this is the fourth book in the Chestnut Springs series, so if you haven't heard me talk about Chestnut Springs at this point, I don't know where you've been because I have raved about it this past few months. It's my newfound favorite romance series, like aesthetic, and it's got me in a country mood because this is a whole small town type of country romance vibe. You get the Eaton brothers in the first two and then you get their friend Jasper in the third one. And then here we have Theo who is actually Rhett from the first ones, kind of prodigy type of guy in the bull riding world. You get him and Summer from the first one, sister Winter. Now the two of them are complete different personalities. Winter is very closed off. Off. On the outside, she seems as if she were a colder person, and Theo's very outgoing, golden retriever energy. When you get a glimpse of them at the end of Reckless, I think it was. I don't know if it was Reckless or Heartless. You get a glimpse of them. But what I loved so much about just this book in general is it's the fourth in the series, so you have all the other characters from the first three in this book, and it was just so amazing seeing everyone, the found family, the setting. Like, you're so in the series at this point. But this book is actually a surprise pregnancy trope, which usually I feel like I would stray away from, but the way that Elsie wrote this, it didn't focus too much on like the, the child and it's like obviously the main point of what's going on between the two of them but I feel like Elsie really focused on them as parents and them as a couple and like being together and figuring out a co-parent and their own issues like yeah the child is a huge part of it that's like the main point of what's going on between them but I don't know how to explain it but it was done so incredibly well Elsie Silver is one of my favorite authors ever her writing is just so easy to go through I binge these books and and it's so entertaining tearing up at some parts I'm laughing at some parts all the other characters hold such a special place in my heart and it was just so good. I think I gave this one four and a half, four stars. Thinking back, this is one of my favorites out of the whole series. Theo was just everything. He was so, I don't know. You guys just have to read this series, get to this book. It's so well worth it. All of the books in the series, I'm obsessed. So that was my second read of the month. Then I read Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. I don't remember reading this book, but I do remember picking it up, wanting just a quick, fast-paced read because this book is like not even 300 pages. So I was like, okay, I can finish this really quick. 
wrong because this took me like way too long to read i feel like i was so just disconnected from it basically kind of like a second chance it's like years ago this girl rachel had a crush on henry but she was moving away so henry's family owns like a, a bookstore so before she left they were like best friends and she left a note in one of the books for him to find and or one of his books for him to find and trying to tell him how she feels he never showed up he never responded and now it's years later and she's returning back to the city where henry lives and he's gonna she's actually gonna work in the bookshop where his family owns where he works and what i loved about this book i will say is the bookshop setting i feel like anytime that's in a book i will love it because i'm just a book lover. I loved that setting and the one thing they had in this book shop was this one section where you anyone can go in and annotate a book and like leave their own thoughts and notes and stuff in book. It was very much a used little section of the store so I think reading the summary of this it says that they would like pass notes back and forth to each other and all this but the storyline the pacing of it didn't really like connect like it didn't really make sense to me. It was also interesting because the main guy had a girlfriend that he was like in love with the whole time in the book and it was like hard to root for them to be together when the whole time he's like explaining how much he's heartbroken over this other girl like it was very interesting and i just don't think this was a book for me so i ended up giving it two stars which i feel like i'm being such a harsh freighter this month but it truly like i didn't want to finish the book and you know that's a little bit rough when it's all not even 300 pages i think it's like 250 that was just a personal problem i didn't connect with it i wanted to so bad because the summary of this sounds so 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 cute and i feel like i was enjoying the storyline of another character in this book rather than the main characters i don't know it was very odd i think that's the word i would use and then i read red white and royal blue by casey McQuiston. This one I have wanted to read for such a long time and I finally was able to pick it up for a video actually and I ended up tabbing this book which I was very surprised because I feel like tabbing it takes a lot for me to want to tab a book like I don't really annotate much I underline sometimes but when I start tabbing that's a good sign so I did give this four stars. I think this was such an enjoyable read. This is about the main character's mom just became the president of the United States the first woman president of the United States and he has this little issue argument thing going on with the prince of of the UK, England. They have a US British altercation going on. And in order to put that to amends to not make arguments and issues with two different countries, they have to fake a friendship. So they're kind of being sent back and forth to the US, to the UK, and taking pictures with each other and hanging out. But as that's happening, the main character Alex is realizing he doesn't actually hate Henry as much as he thought that he did. And I just loved the way that this story like slowly builds their relationship. Like I did not expect to love it as much as I did. I thought it was gonna be more rom com y and lighthearted surface level to me just from the basis of the story but I feel like it got pretty deep and I loved their relationship I loved their banter the way they acted there's actually coming a movie I'm pretty sure sometime in August I think so I'm so excited to see that I've been looking at like the videos and the Instagram and I'm so excited I will say I give it four stars just because it felt a little long to me I didn't love the politics talk I'm just not one to enjoy reading about politics but for what it was it was really 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 good and I'm so happy I finally picked this book up and then I read One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus I've actually had this on my shelf for I can't even explain to you how long like literally years at this point and i've never been intrigued or compelled to pick it up but i finally did and this is just a ya murder mystery this is about these five students who all get detention at the same time and they all have like those stereotypes like there's a nerd a popular girl a jock a weird kid a, a bad kid like the one that does like drugs and stuff like that those stereotypes that you see in like the breakfast club so they all get detention at the same time but while detention is going on one of them ends up dying so now you have people thinking that it's just because of an allergic reaction but then you have the cops and all the other students that were in the detention thinking that someone else did it and now they're going through what happened and everything and the main point of this is the guy that died and he had this kind of think like gossip girl kind of like a blog for the school and he would post everyone's secrets on there there was like animosity going on between this because there's big secrets that each four of these remaining students had i ended up giving it three stars i feel like i wanted more anticipation like i wasn't like dying to find out what happened Maybe I shouldn't use the word dying. I wasn't like on the edge of my seat really the whole time. I feel like it focused more on these four students' secrets and them trying to like figure out the secrets part of this book more than what happened to the kid. But I feel like as it got to the end, it focused more on that. I don't know. Maybe it's the pacing of it I didn't love or what it focused on too much. But yeah, I gave it three stars. It was fun to go along with. I love a YA mystery because it's just like a fast pace. The writing is always super simple to understand and read and I like that. Um, I did end up watching the show because this is a show and the show is just totally different from the book. It was good. 
but it's not the same. I don't know. It was like mid for me, but I'm happy that I ended up reading it. Then I read Juniper Hill by Daphne Perry. This is part of the Eden series. This is the second book. The first one is Indigo Ridge. This one follows Knox, who is the guy from the first one's brother. He's an Eden boy. So the Edens are like the big family from this small town. They are basically like the face of the town and they own like a ranch, but Knox, this main character, is actually a chef at one of the hotels the family owns in this town. And then this woman, Memphis, arrives in town. She is trying to get away from her life and she just wants to go to this remote place with her child and she gets a job working at the hotel from something online. Knox's sister puts her in the guest house on Knox's little land. They meet that way and he is just so not about it. He's kind of grumpy. I ended up giving this three stars. I feel like I didn't really connect with it just like I didn't with the Indigo Ridge first book. This one definitely focuses more on the romance rather than the first one being romance and mystery but I feel like with this one and the first one too it's very interesting like there's no communication on the relationship. It kind of just like slowly becomes something. All of a sudden they're like dating and then in love like happily ever after comes really quick. So I couldn't really connect with that. Like I wanted more from that. I will say that I enjoyed Knox and the child that was in this. He was very, what's the word? caring maybe that's the word i'm looking for i feel like all of their stuff that they had reasons for not being together kind of just got like resolved really quick but it was a good read i like her writing it's another one that's really fast to read it's easy to binge it's just fast paced but again i just didn't connect with it so then we have practice makes perfect by sarah adams this is the companion novel that comes after when in rome by her it takes place in this small town of rome kentucky the small town in these two books is one of my favorites that i think i've read like it is just so sweet and wholesome but it's about annie who is no from the first one's sister and Will is Amelia from the first one's bodyguard because she's like a pop star and basically Annie owns a flower shop in the small town and she's like the quiet sister she's not good at like dating and putting herself out there she has social anxiety so then you have Will and he kind of helps her go on fake dates prepare her to go out into the real world and put these skills to use I love Will he's probably one of my favorite male main characters in a novel like the way he just doesn't want Annie to change but also wants to help her but the way he like goes about it and like thinks about her and like the things he says and does like I just like really enjoyed him like I will say I give this four stars because Annie at some points was like a little bit like ringy-ish like not in a really bad way just parts that I just like was like Ugh, you know but I liked their relationship I liked their chemistry it was like right off the bat really good and yeah it was really cute really fun read like I highly recommend this one and one in Rome it's just like really good small town romances then I read done and dusted on my kindle this one is kindle unlimited I think someone dm'd me and was like you need to read this because they know that I'm in like a cowboy era like I am loving cowboys right now so I downloaded it and I realized that it was like under 300 pages it was a brother's best friend cowboy romance on a ranch and absolutely amazing. I gave this book four stars and it's basically about this main girl who comes home because something happened. She, I think, rides horses. Is that what happened? I don't know. Something happens and she has to come home and kind of like figure herself out, but no one knows why she came home. And then you have meeting all like the brothers. She has two brothers. One is very protective over her. And then you have his best friend and his best friend is perfect cowboy. And I think what I loved about this book so much is it got right to the point, but also giving like deep things happening in the book. Like it wasn't just like a surface level 200 page fun little cowboy book like no it gave more to it and for it being under 300 pages I think that the author just did such an amazing amazing job like I thoroughly enjoyed it the main cowboy character which is so I don't know I was rooting for them the whole time and I'm so excited because the brothers are also getting books and it's just like it giving me chestnut springs vibes and if you like chestnut springs you will definitely like this book it's just like short sweet the cover is beautiful I think I'm gonna order it just to have on my bookshelf because I'm obsessed with it it was short sweet it was to the point but it was really really good I liked all the side characters I liked she had her best friend she had the father was really funny and I loved all of the characters together but then also the two of them realizing there's maybe more to her brother's best friend. I don't know. It was really really good. I gave it four stars. It was just so so good. I have nothing else to say. Then I read Charlie Love and Clichés by Ella May. This book I don't know what happened but it fell so completely flat for me. I honestly wanted to read it because the cover is just so adorable but it's basically I don't even know what it's about. I can't even tell you that's how much I don't remember. I think it's about Charlie who works at her father's company and her father just like doesn't like her basically and he hires this new guy who is William and William was this guy that Charlie saw or I don't know what happened between them back in the day or whatever but she's had a thing for him for a while and now he's hired at her father's company and she's like oh my god and the things that she does is just so I don't even want to use the word cringy it's just not even like not cringy a weird sometimes which is it wasn't doing it for me and William is such a robot like I literally felt nothing coming out of him and it was so weird I don't know 
nothing really made sense to me and we got to the spice scene too the way i cringe so hard and personally i don't mind spice in books i never genuinely get so cringed out where i can't read it like i genuinely almost dnf'd it when i got to the spice I think because i didn't feel chemistry between them and didn't like them as characters that when it was like i just not for me i did end up giving this two stars which is such a bummer i wanted to love this book so bad but i just found myself wanting it to end and i was gonna dnf it but i wanted to see it through just in case i ended up enjoying it because i had such high hopes i didn't want to do that but something about this book just fell so flat for me i just couldn't again connect to it so it was a bummer but then i read rewrite our story by cat singleton again another little cowboy romance this one's actually about this girl growing up on like a ranch vibe and she connects with her best friend's brother from a very 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 young age like i don't remember how old she was but she was like little like she was a child and then you get present time they haven't spoken she comes back because a parent has passed away and she's coming back for the funeral and stuff but she's staying there for a little bit longer and i really really enjoyed it it had such good energy in the beginning and the storyline was so fun in the beginning but when you got to the point of why they stopped talking and what went down between them that's where it kind of fell flat a little bit for me i enjoyed the characters so so much in the beginning the way they were talking to each other but i felt like Cade who's the main guy in here was kind of like love bombing her almost and like doing almost too much almost like gaslighting her in a way to make it feel like she was the victim in all of this and it was her fault when I feel like it wasn't I don't know you have to just read it to understand or if you've read it maybe you understand so yeah I didn't love that part but I will say the beginning I loved so much the first half of this and then I feel like the spice kind of took over and the way he was acting kind of rubbed me the wrong way but I absolutely loved the setting of this I loved her best friend like I loved all of that but like what was going on after a little bit got a little bit too much you know I gave it this book three stars it was a good read i enjoyed it but i think just some parts of it i didn't love that much after that i read the happy ever after playlist by abby jimenez this is the book that comes after the friend zone i absolutely ate this book up like i love her writing so much i can't even explain it to you guys her book writing is just so easy to read and i know i've said that about a bunch of authors in this video but like if you want to binge a book like you need to read an abby book because it gets right into the story and it's all dialogue heavy and it's just like it flows so well and it just keeps going so this book is about Sloan and a dog just like randomly runs into her car and she finds the collar and the owner's not answering it's like a lost dog so she kind of keeps it for a little bit and then the owner calls her and is like I'm on vacation and on my phone like whoever watched my dog like something happened whatever and she's like well when you come home in however many weeks until he comes home then you can have your dog so they like talk over the phone for the beginning of the book and I absolutely loved it like the way they were flirting over their phone was so amazing I loved their relationship journey so much like it, it took from the beginning to the end of this such development and I loved the main character Jason I'm pretty sure his name was I like was obsessed with him the dog Tucker was such a main character too and I absolutely loved that I will say I gave this four stars just because the end I didn't love the little third act breakup that was going on but the book was just so so good it took so many different not storylines but like paths I guess because there's like different things that the main character is going through because Jason is an artist and he's like becoming a big artist basically you also get the best friend from the first one in this book which I absolutely loved it was just so so good the storyline of this is just it's one of my favorites I've never read a book with this story and it was so good. Then I read What Happens After Midnight by K.L. Walther and this book is her new release of the year and it was so fun. It's a YA kind of like adventure book also with a little bit of a YA romance in it. This boarding school and every year there's a jester who plays the senior prank and now the main character is a senior and she gets tagged in by the jester. Turns out the jester is her ex-boyfriend so you get her doing the prank with the group that he's chosen. They're going around the school doing whatever but then you also get her kind of reminiscing on the relationship and them kind of talking again, talking it out almost. But majority of the book is the prank which is really fun to go along with it's very entertaining i gave this book four stars i really enjoyed it there's so many taylor swift references which was so fun i was like underlining all of them I was like little easter eggs trying to find them and then after you get through the prank and all of that you also get their relationship towards the end which i loved like it was very sweet it was very wholesome it was very fast-paced and fun if you're looking for a book like that i highly recommend it was just a fun little book and i loved the way it ended it was super sweet and wholesome and that's all i have to say about this one then i read only love can hurt like this by page tune this one i think i just went into it with the wrong impression is that the word i don't know the word i literally can't think of it but i thought it was gonna be more romancy and it read more like literary fictiony like it wasn't too heavy on the romance it was more about the main character kind of refining herself in this town that she went to and it's basically about the main character ren who goes back to where her father lives in indiana and she leaves there because her fiance found someone new so she ends the engagement goes there and she meets the neighbors who one of them is anders and on the back it kind of says that she meets anders and it's kind of them helping each other because anders has this like secret but it just felt a little bit monotone in a way 
essay. It definitely has deeper messages and deeper meanings within the writing and the story. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of people definitely could connect to it. I personally didn't. I didn't really connect with any of the characters in the book, which I was really bummed about because I really wanted to love this book. But, and I feel like when the, the secret came out, it was like too far at the end of the book that I wasn't connected all the way. So I didn't really like have that any like big feelings towards it. So I ended up giving this two and a half stars. I didn't love this book like so much, but I honestly would recommend it because I feel like there's definitely different things that people can take from this book. I don't know. Definitely going with an open mind because I feel like I went into it just expecting a little, a deeper type of rom-com. I don't know, but I definitely went into it with the wrong expectations. That's the word I was looking for. Then I read The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This is actually a mystery book. This one had me on the edge of my seat probably the whole time. Like I've never had so much adrenaline reading a book uh, ever, I think. It's about this woman who's in a house that's kind of secluded, like uh, in a kind of like a beach town. And she's just reading on her Kindle, reading her on her ebook. And she reads a book that she absolutely hates. And she gives it a one-star review on Amazon. The author actually replies back and kind of like says, can you take this down? And she's like fighting back and forth with the author basically. And then after a little bit, kind of weird things start happening in the house that she's at with her dog. And it's like kind of coincidentally matching up with what's going on with her argument with the author. It starts getting like crazy and the adrenaline starts pumping and you're literally like scared for her, but you're also rooting for her. And I gave this book four stars because in the middle, I feel like it was getting like too much adrenaline rush. Like I wanted something to happen, but I will say I couldn't put it down after a little bit. Like I wanted to figure out what happened at the end and at the end, there's so many plot twists and I love that in a book. I love when a book gets me. Like my favorite thrillers are ones that really get me at the end. And even if there's more than one plot twist, I love it. Like I like a thriller that's more plot twisty, has me on the edge of my seat. I really enjoyed this. I think the storyline was so interesting because me as a reader or us as readers and giving low reviews and low ratings, you're like, that's scary. But yeah, it was so, so entertaining. So I really enjoyed this one. And you also get different point of views in this book too, which was like very fun to kind of try to decipher. Then I read Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So I read this on my Kindle. I randomly downloaded it on Kindle Unlimited at like 7 a.m. I needed a new book to read. I had no books I wanted to read. I read the summary of this. So you have Iris and Roman and they both work together at kind of like this journalist type of place and they're both competing for the, I forget if it's like, it's like a higher position at the place and they're kind of like rivals in this little section of their lives and they're on their typewriters and they're working and getting on the journals and stuff but they kind of are rivals and you get their little banter between each other. And then right in the beginning of the book you actually get Iris's brother who's going off to war. There's these two gods that are now at war with each other. So they're taking like people and they're putting them into the war with them. So Iris's brother gets sent off to war and she has not heard from him because he promised to write her and he hasn't. So she writes on her little typewriter and she actually puts it under her door and it's like a magical typewriter. So the, the letter disappears and she thinks that it's going to her brother because someone is writing back to her. But what she doesn't know is that it's actually Roman, her rival from the journal, journal place, is writing back to her and he knows it's her, but she doesn't know it's him. And then these magical typewriter that actually send the letters to each other. So again, she doesn't know it's him. He knows it's her. The letters, the writing, Roman, what he says to her, what they're talking about is so beautiful and deep and perfect. Like I love deep books. I love pain in books. I love feeling in books. And that's what this gave me. And it took such a turn. And I'm not going to say what turn it took because you just have to read it to understand and get into it. And I gave this book five stars. I literally can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop listening to the playlist that this book is in cannot express to you how much I loved this book and I don't didn't think I was gonna love it because it's more of a historical fantasy type of book and it's not like heavy on the fantasy like yeah there's magical typewriters and there's gods going against each other in war but it's not like fae and stuff like that it's just I don't know and I don't love historical types of books but this one just did it for me the typewriters the way that they were with each other the war it was so good so good that I read it on my kindle and I was like I need I need to have this book physically in my hand I need to annotate this book I need to go back into it like it was so beautiful the writing is just so beautiful and that's what I love in book. So I found an Owl Crate edition of this book and it was a signed copy. And guys, it is so perfect. I literally want to tear up at this book. Look at the edges. They're pink and the front of it is like a typewriter with the iris flowers and the back of it has one of the quotes on it and it says, I want your hand to be in mine no matter what comes. And if you just like romantic, I don't even know, romance, fantasy, but like wholesome almost, beautiful you have to read it. This is what the inside looks like on the cover, like the two of them in their little journal place. And then on the inside, it has a quote on here. I can't. And then on the back cover, it has something that you have to like read to kind of understand, but it's just so, so beautiful. And on the inside, it has like a little message and a signature. And this is literally my new prized possession. I can't even express to you guys how much I'm obsessed with this. I do need to get like the original copy of it, but there's a second one that's actually coming out next year. And I cannot express to you how excited I am. This was just so beautiful. 
that's all I have to say. Then I read I Found You by Lisa Jewell. I was so excited to wait to go away to the beach to read this because it's like a beach mystery thriller type of book. So it actually has three point of views in it, which was very interesting. It was a lot of heavy information in the beginning because there's three different people you're trying to keep up with. So it was hard to start out this book, but you basically have the first woman who lives in a house on the beach and she finds this guy sitting on the beach for a long time and she goes up to him and he's like, I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. Like he has memory loss. He has no idea anything. So she kind of takes him in to help him out his point of view and him trying to remember stuff but he literally can't remember anything third point of view is actually this woman who's actually back in the uk and her husband goes missing and she's foreign so she kind of doesn't know where she is they just recently got married she's young he's a little older and she's just like a mess trying to figure it out but she's just like doesn't know where she is what's going on really because she's new to the country all she knows is her husband but he's gone so you get all three of these point of views and all of them trying to figure out what's going on so those are the three point of views but then you have two timelines so you have all three point of views in the present time timeline but then you have a past timeline I think it's like 20 years in the the past family who goes to a beach town and they stay there they're kind of just like a boring little cutesy family it's told in the brother's point of view it's a brother sister mom and dad and the brother sees this kid guy he's a little bit older than them watching his sister and being a little bit creepy but also kind of hanging out with them it's very interesting you get two timelines three point of views lots going on and you're trying to figure out how does this all connect and that's basically what I was trying to figure out I gave this one a three stars I feel like like I said I like thrillers and mysteries that are more keep me on my toes adrenaline and i'm like waiting for plot twist this one is more you're following their stories and everything's kind of unraveling so that when you get to the end it all kind of just makes more sense together and i do like that it was entertaining and i will say she did such a good job having all these point of views all these timelines end up making sense at the end like it was such an intricate writing and a storyline so i did enjoy that but it's just not a mystery that i like i think it's just not my type of mystery that i enjoy but it was really good i love her writing and then the last book i read this month was our scorching summer by kels and denise Stone. This is a friends with benefits. It's like her best friend's brother-in-law and her end up going on a vacation together for the whole summer. She's like low-key a writer that no one knows about. She's under an alias. She's like blowing up but no one knows it's her and she just lost her job and he's like this. He made an app and he's like really rich and he's going on vacation over the summer to kind of like get inspiration for a new app that he has to make. So they end up going together and I loved their dynamic a lot because I feel like more romances I've been reading it's like a little bit of a slow burn to get to where they are or whatever but this one's like a friends with benefits. It's like having all these things doing stuff as friends and like catching feelings and stuff and then you get the summer vibe and the vacations was really fun i loved the setting of this was really interesting i love the two characters i liked their chemistry the way they talked with each other their communication and everything like that i give this book four stars it just felt a little bit longer but even though it was long it was really really good it was entertaining i loved their story the ending was really good i just i felt a little bit too long for me just personally but it was really good this is a great summer read to read like on the beach binge over the summer it was really fun that's the last book that I read in the month of June. So June was a really good month for me. I honestly, again, don't even remember the beginning of this month. And I feel like that happens a lot in my wrap ups. I just like, will see the books that I read the beginning of each month. And it literally just has gone out of my brain. Those are the books I read. Let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know your opinions on any of them. Literally anything down below and let me know the books that you read over the month of June. So my July TBR is actually in a separate video that I did. And I don't know if it's out before or after this, but you'll have to check that out to see some of the books that are on my TBR for July. I will say I have three books that are not part of that video that I 100% percent want to read in the month of July. So first one is The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walther, the same author as What Happens After Midnight. I actually read this book two years ago, last year. Definitely not last year. I think it was two years ago. But this is our July book month pick. You guys can join our book club down in the description. All of the information is in there. There's different tiers you could join. This is basically just like a little summer romance YA. And I've read it before, but I want to reread it because I really enjoyed her writing and I want like a fast-paced YA romance. I love YA romances over the summer. I don't know, something about it. And this is just like a summer setting. So this is the book we are reading in the month of July lie together and then i have love theoretically by ali hazelwood this one has moved up higher on my tbr because i've seen such good things about this like i've seen so many people say this is her best one yet so i am excited to read this i'm excited to enjoy another rom-com type of book and then the last one that is 100 percent on my tbr that i was gonna read in june but i'm actually waiting in july now to read it is the five star weekend by ellen hildebrand this is her new release i'm excited to read it i think i'm waiting to go away again at the end of the month and i will read this on the beach it's just the perfect setting so now i'm waiting for that to read this but it will definitely be in my july reading month month. Those are the three books that are definitely on my TBR, but go check out the other TBR video if you want to see some other books that are on my July TBR. It was a fun video to film, and yeah, that's all from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did, and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!